Here's what we're going to be doing in this video. Reducing an open ankle fracture dislocation. And what you're watching is the first attempt where we didn't get it. But back to the original injury, there you can see the tibia sticking out with the medial malleolus and articular surface. And now we are going back to the very beginning and talking about the procedural sedation with propofol. And this poor gentleman twisted his ankle while running and you could see the result. It was a fracture, it was a dislocation, and that open bone needed to get it back into place and he was going to go to the operating room in the morning. And yes, we did chat with him about making an educational video. He was totally on board. So let's get back to the ankle. Better look at the articular surface there. It's my partner Dave getting in with his camera work. And this is back before smartphones, really. He was actually had a video camera doing this. All right, taking a look and just getting an idea of what's going on in the skin underneath the bone that's extruding. Is there any additional laceration? Is there anything that I'm missing? I would have been wearing a mask there. That would have been better etiquette. But alas, I wasn't. So cleaning off a little blood and let's give the propofol. This might burn a little bit in your arm. Here we okay. go. That stuff burns when it goes in. I'll tell you what. So now we're going to reduce it and I'm going to take off that temporary splint and start to put on some traction. And the way that these go is you reproduce the angle of injury and then you got to get the, the talus, which is the top of the ankle bone or foot bone underneath that tibia that's sticking out. So this is requiring a lot of force. I mean, I'm sweating profusely. It's kind of like water skiing, getting that traction, getting that proper angle. And that first time he wasn't fully sedated, but now we get him fully sedated and relaxed and we'll pop it right back into place. But it's quite unstable. So I'm holding the top of his foot and letting the weight of his leg kind of hold things in place and not letting it go. So that you could move it. You could feel that things were moving around. It wasn't going to stay in place. Putting some zero form gauze over the laceration aspect, we're not going to sew that. He's going to go right up, get it washed out, get the hardware put in and talking about the Quigley maneuver, which is what I'm doing here. I don't know if it's really called that or not, but that's just what I was taught. Holding the great toe and then letting the weight of the foot and the leg potentially hold things in place when there's a dislocation such as this that's been reduced. And it's worked well any time that, that I've done it. So here we are putting on a splint. We put on the zero form. We put on four by fours and then some, uh, some gauze over top of that. I'm still holding that into place with that same maneuver you can see with my right hand. And we're, I mean, this, this splint is just kind of any sport, any port in a storm. It's not anything of great beauty. So we've got a posterior splint and now we're putting on a U stirrup just to give this the maximal support so it doesn't pop back out um, while we're waiting for him to go to the operating room. And an ACE bandage on here and this ACE is put on super lightly, just in case it swells and you don't want this to, to constrict, although that splint is going to be on for a couple of hours.